2020 has been a bad year for a lot of people, but it's been an even worse year for Islamic scholars and apologists. I have never seen the scholars and apologists of any ideology lose their minds, fall apart, and melt down the way Islamic apologists and scholars did in 2020. They've been destroying their own arguments, trying to cover it up, deleting videos, shutting down the comment sections of videos, filing false copyright complaints, sending us perverted messages about golden showers, telling critics to go kill themselves, getting arrested for child pornography, threatening to execute apostates, praying for Allah to curse us with diseases, trying to get us deplatformed, trying to get us demonetized, hurling racial slurs at people, doxing us and trying to get us killed, heaping insults and abuse on our families, throwing each other under the bus. It's the most pathetic thing I have seen in my entire life life. They need help. Muslim apologists and scholars need help. And fortunately for them, I'm here to help. I'm going to give our friends 10 tips for turning things around in 2021. And this is sincere advice. These are the 10 things Muslim apologists and scholars need to do if they want to avoid a continuation of the meltdown we saw in 2020. First tip. Stop lying. The Quran has been perfectly preserved. No, it hasn't. Muhammad's in the Bible, only as a general warning against false prophets. The Quran is filled with amazing scientific insights. Yeah, like the sun setting in a muddy pool. I understand that in the past, when people didn't have platforms to expose your lies, you could get away with lying. Times have changed. So your tactics need to change. Stop lying. Second, stop getting mad at people for exposing your lies. You come up with a lie to support your religion, then we prove conclusively that you lied and you get mad at us. Get mad at yourselves for lying, not at us for telling the truth. Third, stop whining. Oh, the Islamophobes are criticizing Islam. Oh, they're making cartoons of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You guys will be thumping your chests one minute, telling us about how Islam is going to rule the world. But the second we say anything in response, you're suddenly made of the most fragile glass ever. You pretend that you're victims of oppression. If you're going to call for the violent subjugation of the entire world, don't whine when people respond. Fourth, learn to abandon terrible arguments. Muslim apologists and scholars use some of the dumbest arguments in the history of humanity. The Quran has been perfectly preserved. It must be from God. Two glaring problems here. One, what in the name of common sense would a book being perfectly preserved have to do with it being the word of God? How many books on this shelf have been perfectly preserved? A bunch. Oh, but the Quran is older. Well, tell me, how long does a book need to last before you'll call it the inspired word of God? Give me a number and I'll show you a book older than that and you won't call it the word of God. That's problem one. Problem two, the Quran hasn't been perfectly preserved. Entire chapters were lost. Large passages were lost. Verses were eaten by a sheep. Muhammad's companions couldn't even agree on how many chapters were supposed to be in the Quran. Uthman had to burn piles of Qurans to cover up the differences. Manuscripts of the Quran are filled with textual variants, and even today, Muslims in different parts of the world use different Qurans. Common sense would tell you not to make the preservation of the Quran the centerpiece of your dawah. But what do you do? You just keep pushing the stupidest argument ever offered by anyone for any ideology ever. Learn to give up terrible arguments. Fifth, learn to be consistent. When you tell us to respect your religion, and we know that your prophet smashed the 360 idols of the pagans of Mecca, we can't ignore the hypocrisy. When you demand that any speech that offends you must be banned, while your book is filled with speech that offends us and you don't want it banned, we can't ignore the hypocrisy. So, 
learn to be consistent. Sixth, recognize that people have legitimate concerns about your religion. Whenever people criticize Islam, you say, Oh, they're getting paid to say this. Oh, they're only saying this because they want to drink alcohol and eat pork. It never seems to cross your minds that people actually have legitimate objections to terrorist attacks and child marriage and female genital mutilation and honor killings and killing apostates and so on. Why can't you acknowledge that you've got some problems? Seventh, stop making enemies. You heap so much abuse on anyone who so much as questions your religion that you're constantly turning people into enemies. I've seen a lot of Christians who started off saying, I have a heart for reaching Muslims with the gospel. I just love them so much and I want to see them come to Christ. Two years later, these same Christians are blasting away at Muhammad and the Quran and telling me how they can't stand your religion. What happened? You say that they became more hostile to your ideology because of us. No, you guys are doing this to people. As soon as they start preaching the gospel to Muslims, you guys start insulting them, insulting their families, threatening them, threatening their families, and you turn them into enemies. Dumb move. Dumb move. Learn to disagree with people without turning them into enemies. Eighth, attack arguments, not people. How many times have we seen an ex-Muslim present an argument against Islam and you respond by saying, don't listen to him, he wasn't a real Muslim. I can lay out 30 different arguments against Islam and your top apologists will reply, don't listen to him, he's rude. Don't listen to him, he used to be extremely violent before he was miraculously transformed by the power of the gospel. Attacking the person does not answer the argument. So when you keep insulting and attacking the person who's making the argument rather than refuting the argument itself, we start to think that maybe you just can't refute the argument. Ninth, stop using the 99-1 rule. Muslim scholars and apologists have always understood that the vast majority of their listeners, Muslim or non-Muslim, will mindlessly accept anything they say. So if they're speaking to an audience of a hundred people, they know that, at most, one person may actually investigate their claims. But if that one person realizes that the scholars and apologists are lying, he'll be silenced by the 99. So it's always been in the best interest of the scholars and apologists to just keep lying. But times have changed. It's no longer one person who might do some research. There is an online army of critics and ex-Muslims who are actively exposing the claims of Muslim scholars and apologists. You can't keep relying on the 99-1 rule because even the 99 who wouldn't have researched the claims have an internet connection and someone's going to tell them that they've been lied to. Tenth, all of Islam's current apologists and scholars need to retire so that the Muslim community can start over. The current apologists and scholars are kind of set in their ways. All they seem to know is thumping their chests, insulting and mocking anyone who disagrees with them, lying, and clinging to terrible arguments. They need to step aside and let other Muslims come up with a new approach. The Muslim community needs to say bye-bye to Sheikh Yasser Qadi and Zakir Naik and the lower-level apologists like Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab. New scholars, new apologists, a new approach, it's the only way forward. So, those are my 10 tips for saving Islam in 2021. Again, I'm not joking when I offer this advice. These are things they actually need to do in order to rescue their ideology from further collapse. Will they accept my generous gift of wisdom? Of course they won't. But if they won't accept my advice, if they continue lying and getting mad at us for exposing their lies and whining and clinging to terrible arguments and being utterly inconsistent and dismissing people's legitimate concerns about jihad and turning people into enemies and attacking people instead of their arguments 
and relying on the 99-1 rule and putting forward representatives who have no other way of doing things, we can look forward to more deleted videos, more false copyright complaints, more messages about golden showers, more arrests for child pornography, more racial slurs, more threats, more doxing, more attempts to get us demonetized and deplatformed, and a lot more instances of throwing each other under the bus. Because there is no plan B for these guys. Fun, fun, fun in 2021.